All right, we're back for uh, part two on this Galaxy here, and uh, I am going to replace the ignition switch. Uh, I never got keys for this vehicle, um, but I think that uh, it'll be a lot easier to move if uh, if I had the ignition switch. And then we could see you know, what works and what doesn't, lights, uh, air conditioner, uh, well, air conditioner fans. I know there's no belt on the compressor, but uh, let's see if we, let's see, I've never taken one of these dashes apart before. Let's see if we could uh, go ahead and uh, get that started. All right, I do see some uh, some screws on the top of the dash, the screws on the bottom of the dash. Let's take those off, see what happens. All right, it looks like someone has been in here before. They put this stupid uh, USB thing on here. Uh, now, when I was cleaning out the trunk, I did find the radio for it. So, yeah, look, they they just uh, wired that in there. Ah, this thing's pretty clean, man. I love it. Go ahead and unscrew that. See how hard this is to get out. I'd really like to see what you could see, what I could see. Um, looks like this ignition switch is hooked up in the, in the back there. Uh, the radio is missing, which is cool. It makes it easier, easier to work on. This just screws right out. It looks like this is just a a direct replacement we can just put pop that in there so uh let me go ahead and pause this uh and when i come back we'll be in back in business okay we did go ahead and get the uh get the old ignition switch out um i uh i'm gonna put the new ignition switch in now uh i just wanted to tell you i do like to put dielectric grease in all these elect little electrodes here uh it makes it so much easier to get in and out it uh keeps it from corroding so uh let me go ahead and put that in and i'll put it in the uh put it in the dash and we'll see what kind of uh see what works all right so i went ahead and replaced the ignition switch it's kind of a pain in the ass because uh my hands are too fat for the uh to get in there um i hooked up the battery i want to see what kind of power i have if it starter works we'll see what's going on Oh, windshield wipers. I don't even know which one for. Wipers. Well, wipers work. Well, the starter works. Uh, I did hook up the coil back to the stock wiring. Um, let's see what we can, if it'll start. Probably not, which is fine. Let's see what else works. Oh, fans. Fans for the AC work. Uh, pretty neat. Uh, I know the AC is not going to work, but if the, the fan makes a horrendous noise, but that's okay. All right, well, let's see if... Uh, uh, what does this do? What does this say? Lights. Um, let's uh, see if we can't get it started with the key. Uh, see what's going on because I know it starts if I jump the coil maybe the uh, it's just not getting power so let, let's let's go okay so um, let's try this again I have the uh, I want to try and start it with a key and I, I have a feeling that a circuit breaker because this is ancient uh, a circuit breaker went bad and that's why it's not starting with a key uh, Yeah, so let me uh, let me try to jump the solenoid and start it again because I figured out why it wasn't starting before. Uh, you know, <laughs> do I really want to like tell you guys like 
that I'm a fucking is that I'm an idiot and uh, when I pressure washed it and got water in the in the distributor cap that's what that's exactly the reason why it didn't start so here I am looking at everything uh, until I looked at the distributor cap and there's water inside and cleaned it out and then started right up yeah so uh, I'll show you that it starts I don't If it is that, uh, let's see if it is that, let's see if it is that, uh, circuit breaker that's bad. And, uh, that way we could start with the key. Oh, never mind. I guess it, now it starts with the key. Great. Uh, now I look like an idiot. <laughs> uh, well, it runs, it starts with the key, which is, Accomplishing a lot because now it's so much easier to to move around. Uh, horn works. Windshield wipers work. I don't know how to get the. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, let's check the lights while it's running. Let's go ahead and check the lights. No lights. That's okay. I'm not too worried about all the electrical stuff right now. Uh, let's see if we can uh, do a little tune-up. Uh, it, it, it does look like the carb is leaking. Uh, right at the accelerator pump. I do have a bunch of stuff. I have uh, I have spark plug wires. I have oil, spark plugs, uh, cap and rotor. Um, Oil filter, fuel filter. Uh, so let's do a little tune up to this, uh, and let's see uh, see how good we can get it running. Cap and rotor, carburetor rebuild kit, uh, spark plugs. I did order manifold gaskets. Uh, the manifold bolts look like they're they're they just look junk. Uh, I ordered new manifold bolts. Uh, I don't even know how I'm gonna get them off. They look so bad. Uh, fuel filter. Now it's the ignition switch we So uh, let's go ahead and uh, get that started and uh, see how good we can get this running. Uh, get it timed. Get it t timed and everything because I just moved the timing. Thinking it was the timing. Uh, all right. All right, first thing we're gonna do on our little tune-up here is we are actually going to take off the carburetor because it's leaking like a sieve. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, it's actually leaking out of the accelerator pump. Uh, a couple other gaskets on there. It's just leaking really bad. And last time I didn't get it on film, but I started a fire. And fires are no buenos when it comes to working on cars. Not my favorite thing. So let's go ahead and take all these brackets off. Uh, I'm just gonna set them right on top of the intake manifold here because I'm an idiot. And I will probably lose them. <laughs> uh, but that's okay because we learn. See how hard it is to take this thing off. You know what I really don't like? I I really don't like a bunch of hoses in the way. Uh, just like a, a very ugly engine bay. Now I say that, and I really want, I say that with a good intention because I really want to keep this engine bay kind of uh, uh, really patinaed. I don't want a nice engine bay in this. Oh, of course. Yeah, I really want a, a nice patinaed engine bay. I, I want everything to run perfect and operate perfectly, but I think it'd be really neat if, uh, if we opened up the hood and it looked like it, it was just all original looking. Uh, 
and it looked like it's been battered and driven. Uh, I don't know why I think that would be so cool, uh, but it, as long as it runs perfect, and drives perfect, who cares. Maybe later on, we'll see where this where this project goes. Last screw has to be a pain in the butt. Oh, man. but it takes a half inch. It'd be really nice if I got this choke working perfectly. I do have a full rebuild kit for this. So, ugh. let's take this to the bench, clean it up, put a rebuild kit in it, and throw it back on. All right, so I went ahead and rebuilt the carburetor. Uh, also during that time, uh, my phone decided that it wasn't gonna make any more recording. So I went ahead and ordered a new camera and now, now we're using a camera, which is uh, a, little, a little high tech for me. Uh, so I apologize ahead of time if all the videos kind of are not so great because I don't know how to use the camera, but that's okay. Anyways, we rebuilt the carburetor. Uh, we already stuck it back on because, uh, and uh, we put a new cap and rotor, new plugs and wires. Uh, the thing runs great. Uh, however, it does not charge. Uh, the charging system, uh, something's wrong with the charging system. We don't know what it is yet, but I'm gonna show you uh, how to diagnose, how to go ahead and diagnose a, uh, a three wire alternator without without so you know if it's the alternator or if you know if it's the voltage regulator so I went ahead and put an alternator on a vice here um, move. first time all right I went ahead and put the alternator on a vice and I hooked the positive up to the battery feed uh, the negative up to the ground and there's also a wire here for uh, for ignition when the ignition turns on it sends a signal to the alternator that tells you it's charging or to, to tell it to charge so if I hook up uh, hook the positive to the to the ignition wire and I take take a voltmeter and I hook it up to the to the battery feed, and then I go ahead and turn this clockwise. You'll see that it goes up to 13 volts. This one's uh, So the alternator is working just fine. It looks to me like we do need to replace the voltage regulator. So I already ordered one, it should be here soon. Um, other things on the car that I failed to failed to mention, or not failed to mention, but I just realized, is I didn't realize the rust situation was so bad on this. Uh, that's okay, rust, rust sucks. Rust, uh, 
uh, rust to me is a lot of time. It's not a lot of money. It's a lot of time. The time is money, but that's okay. Uh, let me just give you a, show you what I got going on. Uh, the rust here is, uh, let me pull this camera off of this, figure out what I'm doing here. There we go. Uh, rust, there's rust here. It was covered by a lot of Bondo, but that's okay. I'll cut, I'm going to cut the quarter panel. Uh, I'm going to cut it in between the trim there. Uh, that way, if my welds aren't the best, or uh, it'll hide the, it'll hide it even better. What I'm working on right now, I do need a new trunk pan, but I, I'll get to that in the, in the next video or whatever. Uh, I'm working on now the parcel the parcel uh, tray has some rust on the sides there, uh, so I went ahead and cut it out. I'm going to weld a new piece of metal in there, and uh, we'll go ahead and do that now, uh, so we could. Uh, get the get this situation under control all right after we cut out the bad metal i went ahead and made a template um, for for the replacement part do i really need to put these in here uh is it going to create such a, a a drastic structural change in this car I probably absolutely not absolutely not um but with my plans for this car i do I never had like a really good sound system uh, and I really want a sealed trunk so I know this area is not going to be sealed but I do want to put some dynamite up here and just to create less rattle uh, so that's the only reason why I'm actually taking the time to to fill in these these patch holes on this partial tray this isn't going to be an autocross car this is going to be uh, something that's going to be uh, road raced or anything like that so the, the stability of this isn't what I'm after. I'm really just after something I'm gonna put Dynamat onto so it makes it more of a sealed trunk. So, uh, got my cardboard cut out here, my template here, it's almost perfect. Uh, same size, I just, this is some piece of scrap metal that I had laying around. Um, so, uh, 20 gauge. So I will go ahead and cut this out and we'll, we'll just do a couple, we won't even, we're just gonna tack weld it in. We're, we're not even gonna fully seal this. It's just, it's literally just so I could hold uh, Dynamat to it. So let me go ahead and uh, mark this out and cut it out and we'll, we'll put it in. Now, now that we got the piece size to cut, we're gonna go ahead and burn it in. Like I said, I'm not going to do anything crazy. Um, and, you know, I probably will start a fire, but that's, there's not so many fires with this car. Uh, it's a really pain in my ass. No, but I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to burn it in all the way. I'm just gonna tack it. I just wanna do a, a couple welds just so it's stable, but also, and I'm not, I didn't even clean it that well because I wanted, I put some, uh, and that's what, and you can tell. I put it, I put some paint underneath it where the two over to where the two metals are overlapping. Uh, the reason why I'm, over, I'm just overlapping them is because I don't really care what it looks like. Hey, Daddy. Hey. What uh, are you doing? Welding, can you not look for one minute? We're all welded in. Uh, I just put a couple tack welds on it. I didn't make it really crazy. It's not for structural use. I'm not looking for it to be structural use. I'm not looking for it to be pretty. It's gonna be covered up by the parcel tray. So I do not care what it looks like. No one will ever see this. Um, so I don't care what my welds look like. Uh, it's, not, it's not the prettiest. It's not supposed to be pretty. It's supposed to be functional. 
So I'm going to go ahead and uh, seal the whole area uh, upside, front and underneath with uh, some this high performance enamel. What this will do is it will trap the, uh, it'll make, so the steel does not uh, hit oxygen and start iron oxide, which is rust. So uh, I'm going to seal everything up. Uh, we're going to put the back seat back in. Put a, well, actually, I think I might make a parcel tray. Uh, the one that I took out of here kind of flaked apart. I tried to try to straighten it out, and it, it cracked on me. So I, uh, I'm going to try and make one before I buy one. Uh, there's one for sale on some some Facebook page. I might see how much it is, uh, but I, I really don't want to spend any money on a parcel tray that I could probably make out of cardboard or fiberboard. So let me go ahead and seal this up. And that way we could uh, call this a day. Now I'm going to lay this super thick uh, because there's no reason not to. Nobody's ever going to see it. I don't care if this runs. Once again, nobody's going to see this. I don't care. The reason why I'm the reason why I put it on so thick is because I want it to go to inside every little crack. I want it to just run and seal and take forever to dry because I don't care. I want the runs underneath. It's not going to bother me. I will underneath the, underneath in the trunk area. <clears throat> I'm going to uh, I'm going to sand and not sand and I'm going to probably wire wheel it and I'm going to prime it. And I'm going to, uh, I'm actually going to lizard skin it. I did it on the Mustang and I really like the results of it. Uh, so I'll lizard skin that. And then dynamat it. But I got a lot of work to do in a trunk. I'll show you later. Uh, it'll be another future in the future. But I have a good idea for it. It's laying on thick with two C's. All right, so we are all sealed here. Uh, I went ahead and sprayed the whole thing. I put a crazy thick coat on it. Uh, let's go ahead and move to the front where I can go ahead and install that voltage regulator I was talking about. Can I go to the front? Yeah. All right, so uh, we're back here at the front. I did get a new voltage regulator in. Uh, it's located right here in the front quarter of the car. Let's go ahead and replace it. Uh, start it up. I put the alternator back in. Let's start it up and see if we get if we get a charge. So we do know why the old one went bad. Take a look here. Uh, one of the actual prongs is corroded off. It's still in there. I'm going to go ahead and put some dielectric grease on there. Replace this. Just replace the voltage regulator, put a battery in it, 
Let's go ahead and give it a start, see if it's charging, see what kind of voltage we get. Uh, Tune up, spark plugs, spark plug wires, cap and rotor, rebuilt the carburetor. Uh, transmission's got a leak, but who cares? I'm gonna put some uh, put some transmission sealer in it and drive it around. Hopefully it seals itself because I'm not gonna pull, I don't feel like pulling the transmission. Um, for the next couple couple episodes, it's gonna be just rust repair. Uh, well, that's it. Stay tuned. <laughs> 